What's up everyone, as we head into the last two weeks of Big Brother 26, the iconic Big Brother comics have been revealed and we are here to take a look at them. We've got so, so much to talk about, so welcome to your live feed update. Right before we get started, if you are new around here, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. I do live feed updates here all season long and I will be covering more of your favourite shows after Big Brother is finished. Also hit the like button, um, that one really helps me out, can't emphasise that one enough. Beats the YouTube algorithm, pushes my videos out there more, and it means a lot to me. And also, do put a lot of effort into these videos. So if you feel like buying me a coffee, then please consider hitting up my PayPal link in the description below, or leaving a super thanks in the comment section below. You'll know what time it is. Let's get to the update! Without any further ado, we're going to quick fire the updates because we're getting to that point in the season where things are going real slow and not a lot's happening. Um, I think that you can see that in the Big Brother community as a whole. A lot of our content is slowing down and there isn't as much to talk about. Ask any of the updaters. So I thought we'd do something a little different today. We'll go over the quick brief updates and then... We'll do, we'll do a reaction to the Big Brother comics and, and go over them because I'm telling you, I think there's some juicy ones in there. So, first of all, um, Kimo and Rubina still sitting on the block. One of them is going on Thursday night. Not much to report on there. It's probably going to be Kimo. Things don't seem to be changing. Um, other headlines? I mean, Kimo and Rubina were both discussing how they feel like they should have been, they should have been gaming more earlier in the season. And I'm glad they finally realised that. But again, it's it's too little too late. You know, you... Yeah, it's... Anyways. Um, and Mackenzie uh, did actually... She, she did acknowledge it at one point. She figures the best move for Chelsea would be to take her out next week. Um, and I've got to say, I'm seeing a lot of people starting to make the comparison of... And I know it's, it's a loose comparison. But remember Tyler and Casey in... In season 20. People were like. If Tyler gets to the end. Tyler's going to win. He's the strategic mastermind. That's Chelsea. And then the person who wins loads of comps in Casey. Is Mackenzie. So honestly. Yeah. I can see that comparison. And I can understand why people are making it. Do I think though. That Casey again wins this time. No. I, th I think Tyler wins this time. But again. It all comes down to. If we've got a bit of jury. If Mackenzie and Chelsea are in the final two. I'm going to throw that to you all though. If Mackenzie and Chelsea are in the final two. Who do you want to win? Big Brother 26. Now, the other headline that I think we definitely want to talk about was uh, Chelsea t t said she on finale night she wants to kiss Cam. I don't say anything more on that one. <laughs> Just, I, I think she thinks there's something more than actually is with Cam. Yeah, we'll see about that one. But anyways, let's take a look at the Big Brother comics. For those of you who are new to Big Brother uh, this year... The comics competition is something that happens when we get down to the wire, usually the final six or five, and uh, and the produ producers make a comic, the designer a comic of every single house guest. So, and it's all, you know, there's the, the, the a shtick, I guess, around each, each one and uh, a theme. Just like when you would read a Marvel comic, you know, there's the Incredible Hulk or the Invincible Iron Man or whatever, you name it, or the Legendary Star-Lord. There is something for the house guests so we'll pull up the first one we have leah as the chubby chaser i think we saw that one coming from a mile away that uh is something leah has talked about since early in the season and um i think the producers have enjoyed that one so there we have it as leah as the chubby chaser that's our first one we'll uh and say she's a heavy hitter mm. okay next one We've got Quinn's comic as Quinn Sanity. So it's basically Quinn's hair going crazy and he's in a straight jacket in a mental asylum and it says the ultimate mad hair day. I, I, I don't even know what to say to that one. That one just looks a, a bit wild. I mean, yeah, Quinn definitely deserves the insane treatment because he was the most deluded house guest this summer with, uh, with his HOA trains. Although Mackenzie was a contender at one point. But yeah, that's Quinn's. Okay, comic number three, we have Chelsea as the microchip. I am a little bit disappointed in this one. I, uh, you know, she's really been quite, um, they could have gone for something more strategic, but again, I know they don't want to give away a game, but people feel like that. But yeah, I think that goes to show a lot about Chelsea's personality this season. The fact that they can only theme it off a costume that she had in week one. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Chelsea's definitely leading the charge, though. She's the best player in there, and I, I don't deny that at all. So she's on the ultimate power trip. That is that's something house guests need to pay attention to and read more into. Um, but yeah. 
Then we've got Kimo as Vol Kimo going with the Hawaiian theme there. All's fair in lava and war. I like that. It's a cool design. It's fun, and uh, I love how they're going with the 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 um, Hawaii theme with Kimo. It's it's a lot of fun. Okay, we've got Angela next, and she is the Atomic Mom. <laughs> She's got Matt in hand. He's ready to go nuclear. Oh man, yeah, Angela and Matt for many seasons forward i'm sure we're going to think of those two um as as the uh going hand in hand when she comes down the stairs crazy eyes when she shouts that oh man i like that one the atomic mom it rolls off the tongue quite well and speaking of matt we've got matt's comic next he is of course crazy eyes what else would he have been his retina is getting you rolls off the tongue quite well again but crazy eyes that was Never going to live that one down. <laughs> there we go. So we've got the Atomic Mom and Crazy Eyes as our next ones. Our seventh comic is Mackenzie as Mech Kenzie. Going with the robot theme. She'll control, alt, delete you. Yeah, I think this is appropriate. It's cool. It's not necessarily a funny comic, but it's it's fun. It's 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 a uh, it's, it's badass. And Mackenzie has been a badass when it's came to comps. So Mech Kenzie works. I like that one. And then our eighth comic, we get halfway, is Cam as chameleon i like that that's a lot of fun uh no one will see him coming yeah i like that a lot I, that's one of my favorite ones it's uh i don't know it, it suits cam and it's again badass and i like it a lot so yeah that's half of our comics and as we reach the halfway point i will say if you're a big brother super fan like i am then you will want to make sure you don't miss a minute of live feeds you can subscribe to paramount plus by clicking the link in the description below and watching all the house guests in the end game as they battle it out for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars so make sure you don't waste another second and head to the link in the description and subscribe to paramount plus to watch the big brother live feeds all right let's watch the the next half of the comics now moving on to comic number nine We've got T-Core as Crow Slay. I like that one a lot. That's, um, it's it's cool. Also, Marvel fans, tell me she doesn't look like Elektra here. She 100%, she's got the Elektra treatment. If you get that, if you understand, if I've got any Marvel fans right now who get me, don't make me feel alone now. She really looks like Elektra and I love that. I think it's awesome. Cross her and you're in deep knit. I like it. Again, one of my favorites. It's a good catchphrase. She looks awesome and it's cool. I like it a lot. Tenth, we've got who many would describe as the fan favourite of the season. It's Tucker. Tucker as the instigator. He'll tuck you up. Not going to lie, this is a bit of a disappointing one. Uh, it's cool that he's all over the billboards in Times Square, but I feel like they could have gone for for something else. I feel like, the, yeah, this definitely doesn't... I feel like for live feeders, this probably one's a disappointment, but I guess for the people who watch the episodes the same as the instigator but to me i don't know they could have gone with something to do with biscuits or something with his english accent or the chaos creator or, and I, i'm crap at that i can't come up with that but you know something to do with chaos i think more but yeah it's all right um next up we've got rubina as the roller rebel yes getting a little bit meta now rubina of course likes to um she rollerblades outside the house but again similar to chelsea's there isn't much personality to go off so they've had to fo focus on something from way back when so the roller rebel won't let crime skate by eh, it's a meh from me <laughs> okay we got Joseph next with a reference to Dr. Will as Rewind. There's a calendar in the background that says July 2001. And uh, if you can see, it, it is really small writing, but it says meet Dr. Will on uh, on the calendar. And it says pause in crime throughout time. Yeah, so Joseph basically based his entire game off Dr. Will not wanting to win a comp the whole way and then win the game. Obviously that didn't pan out but it grabbed Dr. Will's attention and uh, Dr. Will tweeted, he said, can someone explain this to me? I don't get it. <laughs> oh man. Alright, comic number 13, unlucky 13 is Lisa as the glitter critter. And yeah, that's an unlucky one. That's a really unfortunate <laughs> comic. It's not very flattering to Lisa. Don't feed her edible glitter after midnight. So yeah, she got the gremlin treatment there. Um, I wouldn't be too pleased if I, if I looked like that on my BB comic. But there you go, there's Lisa's The Glitter Critter. Okay, coming in at 14 is Cedric as Young Cedric. Again, I think that's another one people saw coming. Uh, young Cedric, barely legal, totally lethal. That's something. That's uh, that's Cedric for you. I mean, Cedric, what, what a charmer he was. I liked I liked Cedric a lot. Very sweet guy. But yeah, that's his comic. And I think a lot of people thought it was going to be young Cedric. So there we go. And 15, we have Brooklyn as the charcuter thief. 
I like that. I'm sorry. I'm a sucker for a pun. The shark cooter thief. Hide your salami. Hey, it says what it is on the cover. Brooklyn stole Angela's charcuterie, so she became the charcuter thief. I like it. It's fun. It's camp. And then last but certainly not least, this is the one that I think a lot of people are talking about because producers absolutely shaded him into next week. Sweet Kenny K. He's a real wiener. <laughs> Good God. There he is. He's been called a wiener, sticking out of a hot dog, and uh, the consumer is spitting the dog out. They're eating the dogs and the kids. Sorry. I... <laughs> yeah, he's a real wiener. That's uh, that's an interesting one. And um, I, I get the feeling production wasn't too happy after they casted Kenny because he just wanted to give up at every single second. So they definitely shaded him there. But yes, that's the final BB comic as we round things out with Sweet Kenny K, he's a real wiener. That is all of your live feed updates and BB comic reactions for today, folks. I thoroughly hope you all enjoyed watching, thought we'd do something a little different today, and I hope I hope it was enjoyable. Um, I'm going to give a shout-out to all the wonderful people who got me a coffee yesterday. You are the people who keep the channel going, and you mean a hell of a lot to me. So first of all, we've got Karen Foraker on one of my Only Murders videos, actually, saying thanks as always. Thank you, Karen. I appreciate you, my love. And then Karen also on my Big Brother video saying thanks. Enjoy a coffee on me. I certainly will, Karen. I appreciate you ever so much, my love. Have the best day ever thank you okay then we've got the amazing alicia charles who says thanks thank you alicia i appreciate you i've seen your face around here loads and it just means a lot to me so thank you alicia then we've got the amazing Kimberly the Goat, who says, I agree with you 100% on the Chemo and Rubina comments. They seem super sweet, but sweet is not what this game is about. Playing games and singing songs is not what Big Brother is about. It's about that prize money, and it seems like they never even tried to put in the effort to win it. I like them a lot, but I would be very disappointed if either of them placed in the top two. Thank you so much for everything you do to keep us entertained. It's my pleasure, and I couldn't agree with you more, Kimberly, on that statement that you said. It's, it hits the nail right on the head. Bullseye on the dartboard. Then we've got the amazing Senya Douglas. Who says, Backdoor, speak the truth. Loved it. I laughed for the first time today. Thank you. I'm so glad you laughed. That, that, that brings me a lot of joy. And listen, Senya, I had to get that straight about the backdoor. You know there's still people in the comment section going, Tom, you're wrong. That's not a backdoor. You, absolutely, you can backdoor somebody at Final Five. If you think you can backdoor somebody at the Final Five, then... I would educate you to go on Google and just do some research on what the back door actually is. Because a back door isn't putting somebody up after the veto ceremony that wasn't on in the first place. That, my friends, is called a replacement nominee. A back door is a specific technique on how to get people out because you don't even have the chance to play in the veto when you get back doored. Hence the name back door because you're being sent out the back way. It's it's an unclassy way to go out. You're getting back doored because you didn't even get a chance to save yourself in the veto. So therefore, that's a back door. Not placing somebody up after the veto ceremony. That, once again, is a replacement nominee. Google is your best friend there, folks. Thank you, Senya. Then we've got the wonderful Anita Star 7877. Thank you so much, my love. I appreciate you, Anita. And then we've got David Cushmore who says, Cam needs to put the pedal to the metal to start winning some competitions and win Big Brother. Um, I'd see, I'd like to see Mackenzie throw Chelsea under the bus and that would be epic to watch. Mackenzie needs to win HOH Part 1 in the final and veto if she wants to beat Chelsea. For Rubina and Chemo to save their own skin, start campaigning. Chemo's gone. Simple as. Um, start campaigning at the house and get back in the game. Uh, when you go to Boston, go to MIT campus and then Harvard. The two colleges reminded me in the movie 21. Go see the movie. It's got Kevin Spacey. It has great scenery of MIT and Harvard. This movie is based on a true story. Uh, it has co-star uh, Lawrence Fishburne in the movie. I like Lawrence Fishburne, he's cool. Um, and um, he has also been in The Matrix. Yeah, of course. Uh, eat some crab cakes is the best thing ever to eat. Boston is famous for their crab cakes, fresh crabs, lobsters. Eating fresh seafood is the best on the East Coast. On eviction night, enjoy a good crab dinner with some salad, drink red wine, and dessert for chocolate cheesecake. Drink some Starbucks coffee and eat some M&Ms. Thank you so much, David. I appreciate you, and I will certainly do that. Thank you ever so much, sir. And then last but certainly not least, we've got the wonderful Anne Russell Bruno who says, What is your favourite fish living on the coast? I love halibut. Uh, in Boston, steamed clams with butter is a must. That sounds amazing. Uh, I will miss your BB26 updates. Um, another surgery tomorrow, so catch you on the flip side. Well, first of all, 
sending love to you and Russell Bruno. I hope surgery goes well. Can we all show some love to Anne Russell Bruno and send her some love? Um, I hope surgery goes well, my love. And um, yeah, I'm sending you lots of hearts from me. And as for my favourite fish, I mean, I okay, I, I, cod obviously is a classic. I love I, I could talk on fish all day. Um, I've loved salmon since I was a, a little kid. Um, but I he, here's the thing, I love. Okay, right. trout is is kind of nice as well. Tuna is overrated in my opinion. This is becoming a whole fish review right now. <laughs> um, I'd probably go salmon. I think salmon, but also I I as much as I like a salmon fillet, I I, I love um I love smoked salmon. That isn't just one of my smoked salmon isn't just one of my favorite fishes. It's one of my favorite foods in the world. I love smoked salmon. Smoked salmon loves me. We get along very well, especially when it comes on a nice cracker or, um, I don't know, on, on anything. Because I love smoked salmon so much. Thank you so much, I'm Russell Bruno. And I'm sending you lots of love, my love. Mwah! Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Do all of that wonderful stuff. But until your next live feed update, I've been your host, Tom Vasey, good night.